welcome everyone. I'm glad you're here. Let's be in a spirit of prayer. Father, we ask your help today. We ask that you would be with each one of us. May the words that come from me come from you first, Father. May we hear your voice. May we be filled with your Holy Spirit so that we would know which way to go, that we would know how to treat each other. And Father, we just thank you and praise you because you are worthy of our thanks and praise. We thank you for everything you've done for us, but most of all, we want to thank you for what Jesus has done for us on the cross, what he's doing for us now in the sanctuary. May we not get in his way of him cleansing our hearts. It's in his glorious name we pray. Amen. You ever wonder where where your desires come from? You ever wonder why your desires are the way they are? I mean, sometimes they come at us from uh, deep within, and sometimes God allows things to happen to us that make us look deep within us. Uh, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a love. Uh, Someone done so, has done something mean to you, or uh, you've gotten hurt, you, you're, you injured your knee, your leg, you broke your leg. I mean, we wonder why our feelings are the way they are. Uh, do we like what we see when we look inside of us? When you're forced to look inside of you, you see things that you don't like. Uh, be honest with yourself when you're looking inside yourself because you are the only one looking. But let's remember, God is looking also. Amen. Be honest with yourself when you look inside yourself because you don't have to lie to yourself. I mean, we can be honest with ourselves. If we can't be honest with ourselves, then we can't be honest with anyone. How would you like how how would your life be if you knew the maker of heaven and earth, of all the things that are seen and unseen, waited anxiously to visit with you at any given time 24-7. He is there waiting for us. Anytime, anywhere, when we're in our deepest anxieties, God meets you there. They used to, there was a saying that. When you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. But when you get to the end of your rope, that's where God is waiting there just for you. God loves us. He loves us so much that He sent His only Son to pay for our sins. I have a sermon here somewhere. <laughs> Perfect love does cast out fear. Must be an important call. <laughs> I promise I have a sermon here. <laughs> Some of my friends don't like these awkward uh, moments of silence. <laughs> Today it seems like, like I am at a, I do have a, a loss for words for some reason. It, it's my uh, wish today that each one of us hear the call of God in our hearts. Because God is speaking to each one of us. There's a verse in scripture, I believe it's Revelation 3.21, that God is knocking on the door of your heart. Everyone is getting that knock. And, and Jesus is waiting there, like I said in the beginning, that He is waiting there for you to, to speak with you, just you. He loves each one of you just as much as He loves the other one. Um, we have a great, big, wonderful God, and, he, and he all, he, He's always loving and He's always in control. God never loses control. I mean, uh, when you read the Old Testament, uh, if you go and you just... Uh, cherry pick some of the verses out. It looks like God is a mean God. But God is not a mean God. In the beginning, when He made Adam, He told Adam just before He made Eve, He says, 
I don't want you to eat of that tree in the garden, the, the tree of good and evil. And uh, then he made Eve. I'm not sure why he said it. <laughs> right in the very next verse, it says he, he made Eve. Well, anyway, uh, God did not say, Adam, I'm going to kill you if you eat from that tree. God always gives us a warning. He says, Adam, if you eat from that tree, you're going to die. And those of us that know why Adam didn't die, why didn't Adam die? Because as soon as Adam ate the fruit, there was a Savior. God had planned in advance. No, there's no telling how many eons of time that, they, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit planned this out, that Jesus would take our sins, the sin of the world, and take it to the cross. And then, most people don't realize that when Jesus took the sins to the cross, the sins did not disappear. Jesus took the sins into heaven. And that's a whole other sermon. Our sins are in heaven. And some of you think that would be kind of funny. But you go read the Great Controversy, chapter 24, and it'll tell you where our sins still are. The sins have not been laid on the, the Adventist doctrine, the scapegoat. If you, can, you study that doctrine, you'll see where the sins will eventually end up. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to get into that. That's, that's, that's free of charge. That's not part of the sermon. Mm -hmm. But when, uh, before we do something, God warns us. We know in our, in our hearts and in our conscience when we're going to do something wrong. Like me, when I was a kid and, and, and when I'm an adult, I still, I, I still make these choices. And sometimes, being the lay pastor of the church, you think that, no, Ricky does not make those choices, but I still make the wrong choices. God is still working on me. Amen. When, when Cain, just before he killed his brother, God tried to warn Cain. He said, sin crouches at the door. He was trying to give Cain a warning, but Cain went ahead and he, just like Eve, when she took the forbidden fruit, God didn't show up in the garden and slap her, slap the fruit. He could have slapped the fruit out of her hand and said, no, you can't eat that. You're going to be, you, you, you'll know the difference between good and evil. And, and that's not why I created you. God could have done that, but He did not do that. God allows us to make our own choices. He will not get in your way of your choice. God gives us free will. We can go the direction we want to go. He will not stop you. But He does warn us that there will be consequences if you go through with the things that He's warning you not to go through with. Uh, Proverbs 1 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. When it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, that is not a cowardly fear. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, there's a list of, of things, or, or different things, that if you are in this list, you will not be in heaven. And the first one is the cowardly. It says the fearful will not be in heaven. The cowardly will not be in heaven. This is a different fear. This fear is reverence. God is not trying to scare us into heaven. There ain't going to be anybody in hell. There ain't going to be anybody in heaven because they were scared to go to hell. That is what we hear from our other brothers and sisters who are not within our church. And I do call them brothers and sisters because they are our brothers and sisters. They are. Amen. And even if you, we don't want to argue that point because uh, Jesus says, love your enemies. We love our enemies. And I'm not saying the beach of people in the, in the, that don't come to our church are our enemies. Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had us on his mind. He could see each one of us here today in this church. And he was agonizing with his father. And those of us that know, or those of you that know your scriptures, know what he was agonizing over. 
He was asking God to let this, pun not punishment, but the, uh, the penalty for the sins of the world was death. And Jesus was fixing to take on that death on himself. He was going to take the sins of the world. And Jesus asked God the Father, please don't let this happen to me. And he asked God the Father three times, please do not allow these sins to crush me out. Think about that. I am. I, these, these are. I'm using my words. I'm not using the words of Scripture. God, Jesus asked God the Father to allow Him to. If there was any other way for us to save us in this church today, if there's any other way, all humankind, please let this pass from me. And 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 the Father didn't give an answer to that, but Jesus' prayer was answered because he said, not my will. Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done, Father. Mm -hmm. If he wouldn't have done that, we would not be here today. Amen. Jesus loves us so much that he was willing to go and die the second death. The second death is the forever death. Before Jesus died, he could not see past the portals of the tomb. He could not see past his death that he would be coming back. But he went anyway. Jesus loved the human race so much. I, I, don't, I don't understand that kind of love, but, but Jesus says he wants to give me that love. Jesus asked me to, in Scripture, he, in so many words, he asked us to, to live a sinless life. There is no way one of us can live a sinless life outside of being filled with the Holy Spirit. That is why it's so important that we learn about this precious God of ours who teaches us that He can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Amen. Hear me, please. Jesus can do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Amen. Amen. We, who, which one of us can add an inch to our height <laughs> or add another day to our life? Not one of us. No. Only Jesus can do things like that. He can add another day to our life or an inch to our stature. He is God. He has all power. And when we look at the, the Ten Commandment law, as we talked about in Sabbath school, which was an awesome Sabbath school today, I, I was blown away by it, Ray. Thank you very much for allowing God to use you to speak to my heart. But the, the Ten Commandment law will not save us. We can, what, what it does is it tells us, it's, it's like looking in a mirror. It shows us what our problem is. Mm -hmm. It's like I've got this stain on me that I can't see the stain on me unless I look in the mirror, unless I look into the Ten Commandment laws. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus says, my son, my daughter, you can't fix yourself. Please invite me in. He's knocking on the door of our hearts. He wants to, for the lack of a better word, he wants to fix us. <laughs> anyway, I, I, Praise God for that. He, he, he loves us too much to, to leave us where we are. Amen. And when we study Scripture, as we study Scripture, we see that man's heart is deceitful. It is desperately wicked. It's hard to, to look at myself in the mirror, but we need to do that. Each one of us look and say, you're desperately wicked. Without Jesus Christ, we're lost. What made our hearts so wicked? Sin. Sin has made our hearts so wicked. God tried to warn Adam in the garden. Don't do it. Because when you do it, what happens, what does sin do to the human being? To the human, what has sin done, done to the human race? God. Separation. It has separated us from our God. Being separated from our God Look at the world today and you see the results of separation from God. 
the world is going to, to H-E double hockey sticks, I hate to use the word, in a basket because we have turned our backs on our God. And our God is reaching out to us saying, I want to fix this. I'm going to, I'm going to send my Holy Spirit, I'm going to send my Son in the power of the Holy Spirit to live in your hearts so that you could live this life that I created you to live. God created us to live a perfect life. And, and you think about that. God created Adam and Eve. I hate to keep picking on Adam and Eve, but they were our first parents. They had the, the, the chance to, to say no to sin. They were sinless beings. Sinless beings could not live without God. Think about that. Sin, sinful beings need to look at sinless beings and understand that there's no living without God. Period. We're all doomed without our Lord Jesus Christ. Exactly. You know...
This tells you when you don't have Christ in your life, what, what's, what's to be expected. And I'm reading, uh, starting with uh, verse 16 of Galatians chapter 5. It says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. These are things that you are doing that you really wish you weren't doing. But you're, you, you know, the habits in our lives... Are, the chains of habit are too small to be felt until they're too strong to be broken. That's a, that's a, phenom that's a, my, a little saying, but it's phenomenal if you think about it. The chains of habit are too small to be felt until they're too strong to be broken. Okay, it says, down in verse 19 it says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness. This is living life in the flesh. Life in the flesh is our carnal nature, our lower nature, that the Bible calls it. The spirit of prophecy calls it the lower nature. But if you read on, I'm not going to read all this stuff because it just makes me feel nasty reading it. But it's got selfish ambitions, envies, murders. Now let's go to where, if you're in the spirit, when you invite Jesus Christ, will you allow him to come into your life? He's trying to get in. He's knocking on the door of your heart. He is chasing you. He is after you. He wants you. He didn't die for just, oh, I'm just going to die and make these people will accept me. You know, Jesus is, our, Jesus is our reward. But guess what? We're His reward. Amen. We are Jesus' reward forever, for eternity. When I wake up in that great getting up morning, I want to see each one of y'all there. Man, I want to spend a million years with each one of you. Amen. And then I'm going to start over and do it again. And we have forever. We have forever. Okay, now this is cool. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit, it doesn't say, this is verse 22 of Galatians chapter 5. It says, but it doesn't say, but the fruits. It doesn't have an S. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. Which one of us do not need love? Well, who doesn't want joy? Every day, constantly. Peace. Some of y'all do not have peace in your heart. I know I go through times where I have to fight the, the unrest out of, and, and get back to the peace. I, I'm, I, I think maybe I'm not the only one asking God for that peace. When somebody comes at me on my job and tells me, hey, you know, I don't like the way you're doing that. <laughs> Where's the peace? It's always in God, no matter what happens. Kindness. Goodness. Who doesn't want good? Who doesn't want faithfulness? Gentleness. Who doesn't want gentleness? Raise your hand if you don't want gentleness. Self-control. Who wants self-control? I need self-control. Man, I got two chocolate bars sitting in my office and they've been sitting in there for six months. There was three. <laughs> now there's two. And pretty soon there's only the one. Self-control. Who wants self-control? Man, amen. If you've got Jesus, Jesus gives you these gifts. These are byproducts. The byproducts I read earlier for being in the flesh Murders, envies, uh, adultery, selfishness, all those are in the flesh. If you want to be in the spirit, we have self-control. It says, against such there is no law. When we're in Christ, we don't have to think about doing the law. We don't commit adultery. Why? Because we don't want to? No, we're doing it because... We want to please our God. Stealing, lying, do we want to do these things if you're in the Spirit? No. It says, And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Christ gives us the gift. What was that word you used earlier, right? He gives us the gift of overcoming. Uh, I can't remember the word. 
If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited. Just because we're walking around and, and we've got Christ in our hearts, that's no reason for us to be conceited. We should boast in Christ, yes. But it, it doesn't make us conceited. Provoking one another, envying one another. We don't envy one another. We love one another. We care about one another. And when the, all this happens, uh, persecution is going to come. Oh, goody. You know, we've got to remember that. That when, when we start getting it right, persecution is coming through the church. Guess what? Amen. Jesus is right around the corner coming down to take us home. We've got to remember that one day it's going to happen. We, right now we've got to prepare our hearts. I mean, back in the, uh, uh, in the dark ages, there were people who were burned alive that sang as they were burned. How do you sing when you're being burned? That, oh, that was one thing I forgot. How do we live the life of, of faith? The, the life of no fear. How do we live that life? I want to go back to, to, to three Hebrew boys that lived a life of no fear. They were The king told them to, to bow down and worship him when the music played. And they said, oh king, we love you, but hey, we're not bowing down to you. Throw us in the fire. And they heated that fire seven times hotter, and the men that threw them in the fire burned up. And the three Hebrew boys that were in the were walking around in the fire, the only thing that burned in the Hebrew boys was the ropes. I thought, that is incredible. And you think about Daniel in the lion's den. Who spends the night in, in, in a den of, ang, of, of hungry lions? If you don't think the lions weren't hungry when they pulled Daniel out, guess who went in? The guys that lied to the king or set Daniel up. They threw the bodies in, and before the bodies hit the floor, it says their bones were crushed. Can you imagine a big lion? Just, if you've ever watched lions, they're, they're, they're like, they're, they're muscle well. They move as fast as a small cat. They, they took them out. But to have that faith that uh, they had, they, it wasn't their faith. It was what we know today is the faith of Jesus. They had Jesus in their heart. How can you live in a, in a burning fire without God? You can't. Anyway, I thought that was cool. Uh, Isaiah 9, 6. This is really cool for, for, the, for the Christian. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. In verse uh, 28-29 of Isaiah, it says, This also cometh from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. God is a counselor, and He's wonderful, and He works. It's like, do we look at God like that? But if you read in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, it says, and I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up quickly here. I do have it. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, it says, For I got ahead of myself. It says, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It says in verse 13, who is doing the work? It says, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God works in us. He is our counselor. He is our, our wonderful counselor. What, what, can, what else can we ask for? Where God says, I am going to do the works inside of you. I am going to come into you. I am going to do it. You're going to enjoy Hanging out with me is what God's saying. And that's where God's calling us to. He wants us to hang out with Him. And just think, 10,000 years from now, 
We're going to be hanging out with God. There is one more thing that I want to read before I close. And it is in our bulletin today. 